Hi guys, Keith here from Borneo. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you the seven different phases this airwell has been through. So what is an airwell, you may ask? An airwell? Well, there are many definitions online, but an airwell is mainly a central space located within a home or a building. And this allows for ventilation, which is airflow, as well as uh, natural light to enter your space. So most airwells come with, uh, what do you call this? A skylight or they are open air. But I will show you what I've done throughout the phases. And hopefully, if some of you do have an airwell in your home, you can be inspired to transform it uh, into something, uh, something <laughs> more botanical. All right, so let's get to it. This is when I moved into the new place in April 2021. As you can see, the walls are still peach or beige and <laughs> there was zinc roofing above, which I had removed. As you can see, lots of natural light now enters the space, but the peach walls just didn't do it for me. And so, I had it painted a sandstone color, but it turned out to be more yellow than anything. I had painted the window frames to make them look a little bit more modern. So I just began adding any plants that I had. I did not really have, you know, an idea in mind. So I guess this is what it became, a whole mixture of genuses and species of plants. Here I am balancing on a ladder, stacking all the pots onto the wall. <laughs> and as you can see, there were a lot of caladiums and different species, but in the end, everything just looked a little bit too hectic for me. So I had them all removed once again. Yes, yeah, so I started reorganizing most of the plants, taking them out of the air well. And as you can see, I got pretty overwhelmed as I've been doing the entire garden as well as this air well. And this is what it looked like, but I still couldn't get over how yellow the walls looked at different times of the day. So <laughs> I had it repainted. This process was absolutely horrible, having to paint in between all the squares and knowing me, being a perfectionist, I painted them two coats. <laughs> so this went on forever. there but look at my sexy hand So 
so I tried placing a Monstera on it before completing the entire airwell and it looked pretty good because the contrast from the green against the crater black was absolutely stunning and I was pretty happy with this color. Finally! <laughs> oh, what a process, but I was really happy with the color both in the day and at night. So I had a rough idea of what I wanted the wall to look like, but I just went with the flow because I didn't have many full-grown plants, most of them I had propagated myself and I just let the plants guide me as to you know where they wanted to go but what I did was I took a step back each time and added as I went along so there's not really a fixed process here but yeah just back and forth and seeing where things uh, look the best. Same thing applied to the plants on the ground. Whatever plants I had from around the house, I had just placed them here. It was temporary till I could do something more permanent, but yeah, I think it all started to come together and it grew quite well uh, for a period of time. So I got some laminated flooring from a friend who was getting rid of his existing flooring and I had just placed them outside. I know they're not meant to be outdoors, these are laminated pieces for interior use but since they were free <laughs> I placed them together and they look pretty good. So this is just a temporary solution for before something more permanent. I would love to have wooden decking and there are so many other ideas which I would love to do, but I had to make use of what I had first. So I know a lot of you are also in the same situation. And yeah, you just sometimes have to DIY or make use of what you have.
I had some bromeliads growing outdoors and I had brought them inside to this airwell, which they looked pretty good for a period of time. But then the plants started burning due to the time of year and the sun was scorching hot. So I had to add a black netting above and because there was a lack of light, so the bromeliads started losing their color. I'm not sure if you can spot them there. They are looking a little bit green and bit by bit there was not enough light in here and the bromeliads just started to die. So I just wanted to do a quick walkthrough on the plants in this air well. So all air wells are different. They'll receive different amounts of light throughout the day. Uh, mine gets maybe a few hours of sun, but just to show you the different plants and what has happened to them. So certain plants like the bird's nest ferns are doing pretty well, but others which do not receive enough light or water because it's been a drought and I haven't been consistent with the watering, <laughs> my fault. So some have dried out, but others are thriving pretty well. And jungle ferns as well do quite well. I did not grow these, but they seem to be liking the humid space. The monstera is doing pretty well. And things like philodendrons are also quite hardy, like the one over here. The ability, oh not ability, sorry, <laughs> burly marks. <laughs> and yeah, things like these calatheas over here are not doing too bad. They're actually loving the humidity in this space, but certain ones like the Rufi Barba need more light than the others, so it's not looking great. Some are, but some aren't. We have the fan palm. The giant maiden hair fern and just some other plants but obviously because we receive such uh, different amounts of light throughout the year and certain times it's a rainy period so some plants don't do too well until the Sun comes out again and then they start to sprout but I won't recommend mixing too many different species because each one has a different growing uh, requirement. Just to show you how I've attached the BRC metal. So this is a BRC metal piece which you can get from most of your local, would you say, construction wholesalers. And what they've done is they've put in this metal rod. They've drilled a few all the way through. There, there, here. And they've welded on this BRC bar. So and to attach the pots. It's pretty simple. I'll just show you one over here where it's not too dark. So you attach one piece of this garden wire here and one across and they kind of just hold themselves in place because they can't fall backwards. <laughs> Neither can they fall you know onto the sides. So the front just acts as a holder. Then you can just untwine it here and the thing will come right off unless other roots have entered the pots <laughs> like that uh, which I should have waited till later to do okay 
and it keeps going. And as I mentioned in one of the phases that I added the floorboards, this was from my friend's house. He was getting rid of them. So honestly, it, was a, it would have been in the dumpster or I could have used it for here, so I did. And I have a couple more pieces left. So if these rot, you know, these have been here for about a year plus now, they're not doing too bad. But of course, over time, they'll need to be changed or I'll do like a proper wooden flooring for the outside. So there's drainage that runs all around the air well. This came with the air well when I moved in here. And I've just placed the boards over it so that you get quite a flush edge. Just be mindful as well with certain types of plants like this philodendron uh, lacerum. Now it's reached the top. <laughs> Not sure what to do with it and the roots have found their way all around the air well. And as you can see, it's gone behind the paint. If they start to get through all the cracks, then I will start to uh, remove it. But for now, it seems to be all right. And they're just coming all the way down to get the water from the drainage that runs around. Plants like monsteras and phyllos do really well because they have these aerial roots which they can self-sustain. So this monstera is growing pretty well and it's just growing in a small pot. However, the roots have found their way into the channels running around this air well. One thing good about here is that I do not get any caterpillars, so uh, I don't get all my leaves eaten compared to my plants outside. But I do get uh, different kinds of pests. So this is the rust, and rust uh, disease is usually from fungus, which thrives in humid conditions. So because this place is quite humid, which is why the calatheas are living it, but then you get these uh, rust diseases. Uh, what you can do is just trim it off and yeah, just get rid of the leaves and then treat it with some chemicals. But I should have done it from the first leaf, but I've let it spread now to everything else. And of course, because this is quite, how do you say, enclosed, there is some air, you know, airflow at the top. There is some black netting, but yeah, what I've, <laughs> I haven't treated it, so obviously it's spread over to different plants around, as you can see on the philodendron gigantium, and this is the anthurium. Yeah, you can see it's just getting everywhere. Yeah, so this needs to be, you know, cut off, but obviously I haven't done it, so it's just jumping from one plant to the next. So don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> and also there's some, you know, like aphids, uh, no, sorry, mealybugs. I also have spider mites. I think that's on the, yeah, the fan palm here. Oof, and also scale insects. I did have a lot of scale insects, and yeah, I should treat, uh, trim these infected leaves off. If not, they will spread to the entire plant. But this is doing quite well. Medallion, beautiful. So I know that calatheas like it in here, but maybe I'll spruce up the place and keep like a corner of calatheas. 
but I think for the wall, I'll just keep it to one type of uh, genus, maybe anthuriums, we'll see. Having a living wall in an air well is not a problem. Obviously, if I maintained it every single month or every single week, <laughs> you know, it would still look quite beautiful. But as we all are busy, you know, with work or just yeah, <laughs> tons of things to do in the garden from pests to, to maintenance, uh, you know, sprucing up and whatnot. So yeah, I just couldn't handle all of this and getting the ladder every time to cut off all the dead leaves. I just think it's too much work. So for me, I would just keep it simple and minimize what I have. But if you are a person who just has an air well and doesn't have a garden, a full garden outside to take care of, then of course, you can, you know, go crazy. But do add plants within your means because it's very easy to get overwhelmed. And the amount of times I've gotten overwhelmed with my own garden to the point of just wanting to get rid of everything. <laughs> just be mindful of the fact that you are the one who has to maintain it or if you have a gardener great you know get him in or her in to get the garden spruced up but yeah other things are thriving so it's not a complete failure and I did have the beautiful living wall over you know a year plus to admire but of course now for the past few months I just have completely neglected it so anyway yep So as you can see, having a garden or an air well full of plants is obviously not an easy process. So if you are intending to put plants in an air well, I would say less is more. And I learned this obviously the hard way through the droughts and the rainy periods and just so many different challenges. And if I could do it differently, perhaps I would not have done the wall, but maybe just added plants uh, on the floor. But since it's already there, as you saw in one of the phases, I might turn this whole thing into just an anthurium wall, which for me, I think is, if you just have one species, it's easier to care for. And yeah, I guess I just have to do it and experience it and we'll share a next video with you guys. But thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see, well, can't see you, but looking forward to making more content for you in the future. So thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.